you know, you've got a nice flow through here. You're, you're keeping the pan nice and steady as you're throwing through the wheel. I'm watching my phone. And then, and then keeping the evenness of the panel, but you're also getting your lines right on track, which is important. So as we're putting shape into the center of that uh, panel, you'll notice that the edges are getting a little loose. And uh, we'll be able to take care of that later on. We'll change wheel and we'll start tightening up on the uh, inside and outside edges. But right now, we're um, <clears throat> just shaping up with a high crown flat top wheel, blending and smoothing all the uh, lumpy bumpy walnuts that we put in it yesterday with the uh, bead up bag. And it takes a little bit of control and, and, and eye coordination to uh, to keep on track, doesn't it? A little, little bit. Don't, don't get my fingers in there. Yeah, don't get your fingers in there. You only do it once, it hurts a lot. You can see where I'm... Where your stop starts are. And that's okay because what's going to happen is you're going to cross wheel just a little bit and we're going to blend that out. But also this is the panel that's got an inch extra, so we've got an inch extra around the whole panel for wheeling. And then when we come to start getting it more accurate, we're going to start trimming in a little bit, so a lot of this gets cut, cut away. But um, let's have a look and see what we're, we're looking at, um, Jeff, on our, on our gauge. So, so far we're looking at, we want it to be about a four in radius. It's coming in on the tail end, but we also getting this configuration coming around. The more you wheel it, the more this is stretching this material around, which is making this edge more loose because the whole panel's kind of coming in on itself. At the same time, we've got a loose edge up on the top that's also trying to, to uh, maintain this flatness through here which we're doing real good. So the fact that we've got the panel fairly flat through here is going to give us a fairly true reading of what shape that we have in our panel. So we're doing good. A little bit more rubbing and then we'll jump into the middle brother wheel, which has got the uh, high crown uh, wheels. Um, and we'll punch in a little bit more shape. Yeah, you're getting your flow and go a lot better than uh, yesterday, that little bit of uh, tuning in. It's a curved panel. Yeah, you, a little different you, than being straight. You caught me going straight yesterday. <laughs> so as you come to the end of the panel, you can you can spin this panel around and then you can start wheeling from the other direction, just a detail. So having both ends being usable, um, you're approaching it from either direction, which will help you with your flow. But not in the middle of the panel. No, not in the middle of the panel. And it, it's, it's just practice. Practice makes perfect. Um, doing a, a straight panel, relatively get good practice going, but it's always the curved panels that uh, are challenging. Loose edge on the base down in here can be taken care of, and we can get more accurate. If we take care of this one before we tighten up this one, you're, you're going to come across um, an issue. So just tighten up that edge, just a little bit of a just using the shrinker to do that so the motion on there is very very small mm -hmm. bite marks but you can see now we've got rid of our waffle not shrinking it too much so that we change our flatness right. we want this flatness if I shrink too much on this this panel is going to curve I want to take care of this first you're going to wheel a little closer to the edge now and you're going to try and get that as nice and blended as possible. Okay. And then we're going to run with 
the uh, slightly wider flat top and you're going to put some shape down in here which is then going to take care of this waffled edge because you'll have shape coming in but the difficulty would be it will start going like this if you put too much shape in it and if you run with a flatter top wheel over to the edge you're going to flatten all the shape that you just put in a few things going on so what we're going to do right we're going to see if you can get that all the way on that line not running over that line and then just blend in the smoothie and once you've taken out the uh, couple of creases in there you'll notice that it will jump around a little bit which is fine we're just ironing and smoothing and then i'm going to up your pressure and you'll be able to put shape in all right Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is up your pressure for you. There we go. So now you'll be able to get closer to the edge and just blend and smooth and, and build that uh, through. And that, that uh, takes care of the, the lower edge to your panel. And it's just preference to uh, working with the panel on the inside of the wheel to working with the panel on the outside of the wheel. If uh, you get comfortable by spinning the panel, you'll get comfortable both ways. So definitely don't wheel right on the edge, but you can wheel up to the edge. And then what we'll do is just a little detail shrinking in the uh, shrinker, but you'll be able to see that you, you're gonna get some shape in this uh, section here. See how that edge is just starting to uh, tighten up a little bit as you're going mm -hmm. around and through. So obviously the more you do backwards and forwards, the tighter it becomes. And we're paying attention to whether or not the panel is, is remaining flat or is it getting too much curve the wrong direction. So after a couple more blows, we'll have a little look. Feel the middle picking up. Yeah. So you can see where we got relatively flat on our panel. <clears throat> we have a little hole along here. We have a little bit of a hard crown because of a loose edge here. And we have a little bit of a hole on the back edge here. So what we do is just a little bit of manipulation. You just take the high spot and the low spot and pull one into the other. Just a little flex, a little twist and it gives you a couple of small ones and takes the larger one out. Okay. You're gonna do the same thing here, you take this larger one and manipulate it out onto that one to make that slightly smaller too. What you're now doing is evening the stress out on the uh, panel edge. And you're constantly gonna be manipulating your panel um, on every panel that you make because edges don't like to conform as much as what the center of the panel does. So we'll do a little bit more wheeling. But you can see now where we have this really big waffle edge in there, it's slightly picked up and it's still maintaining 30 flat. So you want to come a little bit closer to the edge uh, and we've got a little bit of pressure on it. So we still know that we need more shape because we had a couple of hollows in it. when you've been doing this for a little bit or quite a while you'll get into more of a rhythm and there'll be more of a flow in action just try not to run over your black line and flatten out all the shape that you just put into the other panel run a little closer to the edge if you want to there we go yeah you can go a little closer than that on the next blow you just don't want to run on the edge but you can go up to the edge there we go Nice, and then you're going to go back out again to the center of the panel a little bit, continuing to put that shape in. And as you put that shape in, the waffled edge is getting less and less and less. And the edge being the center of the bottom die. So the edge? When you say you don't want to run off the edge. Right. So, so the edge would be to the center of the middle, the bottom die. Yeah, so where your flat top is on the wheel, 
and where the strike mark is on the panel, that's what I'm talking about. Because okay. you don't want this strike mark to be out on this edge, because that's going to stretch that edge up real crazy, real quick, and you're going to be back to where you were. Got it. So you're, you're running up to about three quarters of an inch up to that edge. And as you can see, the waffles have got a lot less, and uh, it, it's, it's starting to manipulate and move in the right direction. That edge isn't as, isn't as loose as it was, and we're still maintaining um, our flatness through here, which will fit the buck. We're not curving it too much, and uh, it's not hollow anymore, because when we started, it was hollow, right? Mm -hmm. So carry on going just a little bit. Just back it off just a hair. Good, by applying more pressure progressively, you're in control of the panel. Okay, so you put too much pressure on it, you're thinking it's good, and it's, it's stretching too quick. By running through a couple of times, working out where that pressure is and the amount of shape that it's putting in, you're remaining in control of the panel. You can always up your pressure. So what I'm going to do, uh, Jeff, is give this a little shrink, just a hair, just to tighten up that edge for you. It's not going to be a whole bunch, because you've taken out most of the waffle and you're pretty flat still. So what I'm going to do is just gently just bounce around it, just shrinking very, very small increments, to keep them all together, just to tighten up that very edge. There's just enough shrink to take out the waffle, but not enough shrink to stop the maintaining of flatness. So that we're still flat with our panel. So you can see where we have a little bit of a high crown, mm -hmm. and we've got a little bit of a low in here. So you're wanting to put a little bit of shape through up in here, and a little bit more shape through up in here and try and stay away from this middle section. The middle section is, is where a lot of the shape is. So you might just want to rub between here and here and here and here, but make sure you're not getting any stops and stops. But it's coming in nice. See how that panel's picking up nice on the shape now. So what we're looking for is it's going to be, we're going to be looking for your panel to start looking like this one. Okay. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of difference in crown. So what we're going to do is, because this wheel has a large flat on it, has a flat top, and the other wheel is still quite a large flat, we're going to jump over onto the middle of the wheel and the flat tops on there, they're a little bit less wide. Okay. So you'll be able to put shape in a lot more. So now we've taken care of all the walnuts where we stretched everything up. We ironed it out with the flat top wheel to get it more consistent. We then took care of the, of the, of the waffled edge on the top by wheeling a little closer and doing a very, very light shrink. We then did the same thing. We changed to a wider flat top where now in this section here, putting more shape in here um, and taking care of a lot of the big waffle. So now this is a relaxed panel. This panel is not bound, it's just nice and, and uh, flexible. So then we just came in with the shrinker to tighten up that little edge just to keep it more uniform and take the waffle out the last stage. Now jump into the other wheel. You're going to wheel again from just about three quarters of an inch in 
you're going to wheel around in an arc and you're going to put more shape in through this panel again. All right. right now, we're probably looking close to about a number, I, I would relatively say it's, it's going to be about a four. Right now, you're getting close to a four. You can see where that comes around. And what we're wanting to do is we want to make that more or less like a three. Right now, just a little bit tighter than a six. It comes into a, a six perfectly there, and it comes into tighter than a, than a six here. So right now you're at a six, and you want it to be a four radius to be able to marry up with our, with our bark and conform to the outside edge of our wooden, wooden form. An inch. So now you can see how much rollover shape you've got to go, how much crowning you've got to put in it, so that you end up fitting up like this one and it comes in to be a click fit. So that's what we're looking for. Okay. So now you're going to run from here down to about here on your panel and you're going to do a flat top that's a slightly high crown and you're going to punch some shape in around there to get your panel to have more shape through here and roll over. So now when you try yours up, get it in your mind's eye on how much that's going to be because you're going to dial in the pressure. And what we'll do is we'll pop on to the uh, metal roller wheel. Jeff is on the top here is all the flat tops. These are the flat top wheels and these are full radius. So like we talked about the difference between having the little flat on there or having the continuous um, radius. So once we once we've done the flat top we're going to start using the high crown wheel okay. with our rubber band to be able to conform it to give it some bend. So we'll be doing linear stretching it with flat tops, getting our shape in the panel. Then we'll be coming into the high crown to linear form to get everything to throw over so that it makes it the right shape to the bark. Okay. So we'll start off with a flat top. Um, we'll get the gauge. I'm thinking that, um, you know, you're gonna be looking at a four, number four radius. The number four radius on the bark, as you can see there. Um, so I would suggest using a number three radius um, for it. And being as this is a bottom feed and that's a top feed, the direction is, is the opposite. So as you as you turn this one this way it around, it's, it's getting looser. You just turned it this way, it's slightly looser. Okay. So here's your marker. You're going to come in, you're going to feel your pressure, and you're going to determine how much pressure you're going to need to shape that panel up. That's a little bit looser. There you go. And you'll feel completely different in this wheel compared to the other one. So my parting gift is the bigger wheel. <laughs> I always like people starting on the English wheel. If you can learn English wheel, you've got to go to cast. Fabricators, they're okay. But it's nothing like a cast wheel. In my, in my opinion, that's just my preference. Good. So now you're getting a feel from the machine on how much pressure you're going to need to be able to get that shape to come in. And the whole goal is that as you're running backwards and forwards, you're wanting that panel to be steady. You don't want it to be flapping. So you, you do need a hand at least halfway down, if not the whole way, but mind your fingers. But you do want that panel to remain nice, flat, and even all the way through, no flapping and wiggling. Because as the panel flaps around and moves, you're putting highs and lows in it. And the whole goal is to keep it and maintain it nice and smooth and flat. So now you can see how by taking the waffled edge out, 
and tightening up the other edge, this panel is starting to take shape. You'll see the shape go in and it's maintaining a uniform flat plane for you. And then coming over onto the high crown, you'll be able to drop down and, and drop over. So I would spend a little bit more time on the higher crown section because that's where you need your shape. So if you do your shape in where you are right now, get some crown in there, and then you'll see this outer inner, inner edge start getting a little bit looser, and then you say, oh, I need to pick up on the inner edge a little bit more now. But you're really focusing on getting more shape into the center of that panel. And as we're using the flat top wheel, you can see that the shape is starting to flatten out on you. The, the shape of the panel is becoming relatively less crowned, go doing the opposite to what you want. But in actual reality, you're putting shape into it because you're linear stretching as you're running backwards and forwards through the wheel. And so that you get an understanding of, okay, well, I see what you're saying, how do I get it to conform again? What we're going to do, use our straight edge so that you can see that now our panel is no longer flat. Mm -hmm. Our panel is curved. That's because as this curvature here flattened out, it's forced this panel to do this. So there's a high spot. Well, it's just, it's just the nature of the beast that as you wheel with the flat top wheel, it's not allowing you to get that constant curvature. Okay. So now you want to see well, how close am I? I've done some wheeling, may not be enough. It may be too much. I don't want to go too much. So I'm going to kind of gauge it that, hey, right now I need to take care of this so I can see whether the panel fits okay. on the buck and have enough shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to change from wheel from being uh, a flat top we're going to change it into a high crown radius number three. So now you're going to go to the full high crown radius. If that said a number three, uh, two point oh. Let's have a look. See what we got. Is that? Yep, that's a two. So you want the three. So you see how the wheel fits perfectly to the radius. So you're wanting a number four, and we're gonna use a number three to achieve the number four consistent okay. shape. If we had a number four on there, with the rubberized wheel, you're not gonna quite achieve your number three to four radius. So you really want to use this one here as, as a three. Then we're gonna put the band on there for you. You might wanna pop that out and hold on to that. This thing, this thing is a new, Technology, only Mitter Brothers have come out with it, and it's really nice. It's a urethane rubber wheel, but it, it is very, very challenging to get on. But once it's on, oh my gosh, it's like a Cadillac. I mean, it's the best. So much better than the uh, regular rubber. So now we have the rubberized wheel on. You can pop in your uh, eye. You're going to come back into pressure, and you're going to notice that you're going to have to back your pressure off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a panel that's been pre-wheeled already. And it doesn't matter if you put more crown or not. But I want you to get the feel of how much pressure you've got in between the wheel here and the rubber to how much curvature you're putting in. You don't want to rib it. It's very easy to rib the panel with the rubberized wheel in. Okay. So we're using very light pressure with lots of passes to keep coming backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards, and it will give us this um, consistent curve. Have a little feel. You tell me what you're thinking as you run backwards and forwards with that. And with the rubberized wheel, you tend to go a little slower because you want to keep them really, really close together because the blow mark is so small. It's almost like a, a, a 
pencil line. Are you seeing how that uh, is forming that over? Let me, let me try your pressure. It's probably a little loose. Yeah, just a tad loose to come up a little tighter. You can go just a hair tighter than that. Yeah, there you go. I can, I can see the forming blow mark now. So what I'm looking for is that little track mark. It's not boom punched up, but I can feel where there's a very, very slight difference. So now feel the pressure that I have it set at for you. Big dip. And then you'll start seeing that to conform. So now you've got the understanding, let's jump, let's jump in with your panel, and you're going to do the rubberized board, and you're going to get it to conform to the shape you need, running backwards and forwards. Working from the middle towards the end. No. So you jumped in straight away in the, in the center, and then feel that put a rib in it. Okay. When you feel across this way, you can really feel that high weight spot. Whenever you're using a rubberized wheel, wherever the shape starts and finishes is where you want to go to and from. Okay. So in other words, if you need the number three radius or number four radius on the outside of the panel, you want to either come from the point of start and run out, or you want to start on the outside coming in. Okay. My preference is that you start on the very outside and you start working in. Okay. That way, then you can come from the inside back out again, and each time that's putting a little bit more bend, a little bit more bend, a little bit more bend on it. You, you never, on the rubberized wheel, you never want to start in the middle of the panel. Can I have a Un unless, unless the shape calls for it. Say, for instance, this section here should be flat, and this section here should be flat, and this should be high crown number three, then obviously you start right where the, the flat ends into the shape, and the flat ends into the shape, and that's only the area you would do. But we're gonna go consistent all the way through from the half inch to three quarters of an inch in, we're gonna come all the way through to the three quarters of an inch on this side to get that consistent. You can run real close to the edge on this one, so you can come in as close to the edge as you want, because you're linear forming, it's not linear stretching. This takes the stretch out. Okay. So you're not doing any damaging, you're just doing forming. So we're going past our two inch line. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so I don't need to make another one. You, you don't want to run much more than about an inch, inch and a quarter on that side there. That's about as far as you want to come. Because we do need that little bit of a flat that's right down on the edge of the buck. So if you run up to that line, that'd be great. Are we having fun yet? Oh, I learned a trick <laughs> yesterday. Put your fingers on the edge and move your hand. <laughs> oh yeah, only if you've got smooth edges <laughs> and deburred. <laughs> oh, I'm going the opposite way. I, I just shared my preference, so but uh, yeah, start with the. Uh, I pr prefer to start with the outside just to see how it comes over, and then you'll see how the edge is dropping over on you. And what you want to do is you want to keep each strike mark very, very close together and as even as possible. Do you see the shape start coming in? Are you seeing it bend? I think so. Yeah? I'm seeing it bend. Yeah, this, this band, it really moves metal nicely. It, uh, it does it evenly and without ribbing. Whereas you can get a little too much pressure with a, with a regular rubber band and it leaves little ribs on there. You hear the sound that it's making? It's just one consistent it's sound all the way through. The little swishing noise mm -hmm. tells me that that panel is at the right pressure to the wheel for the amount of forming that it's doing. It's just gliding through. So 
So what we'll do, uh, Jeff, is have a look with our gauge. If you were at about a six, it flattened out to probably an eight when you, you started it. And now we're coming back in. Now you can see where we're actually a six coming all the way through. You want it to be a four. So you're seeing that you might want to up your pressure just a little bit so you can get that to crown up, okay. just that little bit. So you can go up with your pressure a little bit. I just wanted you to get the feel. Feel how smooth that is. No ribs. So when I say ribs, this way is your highs and lows. Right. And this way is your ribs. Okay. You, you've got to feel it across ways to be able to feel your ribs. You feel how smooth that is? So you had your pressure just about right and it was forming it. But to speed the process up, we're going to dial just a little bit more pressure in. And still work from the outside in. I would. Yeah. That's my preference. Because then you can see how that edge is dropping over. Well, and, that how, now is my and how it changes the uh, internal. That's kind of a foot stomper. If, I, if this is my preference, then do it that way. <laughs> you know, there's, there's more than one way to do metal shaping. And I come, I come across it all the time. The, uh, the right way to do metal shaping is that if you're achieving the right quality in the panel that you're making at the right time and pace that's comparable to someone else making it slightly differently, uh, there's no wrong or right way. If it's taking you too long to do it or you're not getting the quality that you want, you might want to change the method of how you're doing things. But this is probably the quickest route for you to be able to get that edge rolled over and it tell you how much difference it is uh, in comparison to the internal um, flange section. So now we're linear forming, not linear stretching. Let me have a little feel real quick. Yep, it's feeling good. You could actually up your pressure just a hair more. I'd like to take your time on it and get it more progressive and to jump right into it and go, man, it's way too bent and I've got ribs all over it. But I can certainly see it's starting to You see the change? If, yeah, exactly. So when we try a profile on there, we were a six and now it's getting a little, a little tight on the six, but we're not a four yet. Yep. And so whenever you're wheeling the panel, whenever you're doing anything in the wheel, as doing rubberized wheel, the forming, or if you're doing the linear stretching with shaped wheels, the idea is that you keep an eye on where your marker indicator is. So that when you come to do the other side, you know exactly, oh, the pressure should be here, so that's why we have a dial indicator on there. So that you come to do the other side after you've done the same motion through the large wheel, you come back to this one and say, yeah, I need this X amount of pressure to give me the consistent forming. Not too much that brings it, not too little that it takes too much.
So you can run all the way up to the edge, just don't run off the edge because you'll damage the, uh, the rubberized wheel otherwise. So this is forming the panel into the shape that you want it without having to manipulate, bend and form um, using, your, uh, using the bench and running around the shop trying to uh, get it to conform. You're just sitting at the wheel and, and you're shaping it up and it's conforming in. You're linear, linear forming it to the shape that it's needed. And then you can come back in and you can uh, take the band off and, and, and stretch it more in the areas where you need it. So let's see how much shape you have in there. So what we're going to look at is our radius. So you can see where we're getting closer to a four. We jumped off the far, off of the six because the edge is off off the um, thing. So you can see that we still need more, but you're coming to about a five radius. And then what we're going to look at is you see is the panel becoming straight again. Remember when this was less crowned on this on this thing, we were fairly we were fairly domed this way. Now when we come back on again. We're now coming in dead flat. And that's what we want. That's a good sign. That's where we want to be because the buck is dead flat. So we don't want it pooched out. And if you get too much shape in here, it's going to make it too radius. And now you've got to start stretching on that edge to take that shape out. Okay. Which is doable, but why go there if you don't have to? So we're progressively going in more and more and more. So that when we try our panel on, we can then see, wow, compared to where you were just a little bit ago, you're getting quite quite a bit closer. So the gap under here is getting a lot less. And it's touching on this end, it's touching on this end, on the buck, we don't have a rock. What we have is a very, very slight twist, so that we just take care of the twist by twisting and flexing our panel to bring that in nice, nice and uniform all the way through again. So let's feel how we do it. You can probably up your pressure a little bit. Once you get used to the machine and pressures, then you'll be able to jump in pretty much at the right pressure straight away and do probably 20 passes and it would be the right, right shape. But we're just doing it progressively so that you can get the feel of it and the understanding of it as it goes over more and more and more. Just a learning curve. What I love about the wheel is it's so mellow, whereas using a power hammer and plowshing hammers is just need your earplugs in and constant vibration going through your arms. It's very zen. Very zen, is it? And that's what it's all about, the English wheel, is, is it becoming one with a machine, that the rhythm and just the whole consistency of it is flowing. Otherwise you're, you're jumping around and stop, start, stop, start all over the place and you, you're really not getting a consistent line and flow. So what you notice is the, the width of the uh, holder and the width of the wheel is a lot narrower on this one compared to the full sized. Oh yeah. So that makes it nice too, especially for high crown panels like that.
couple more passes and then we'll see where we are. So what you need to pay attention to is, even with the rubber band, even with this uh, urethane band, you'll notice they walk. They eventually walk. Oh yes. So you just need to re-manipulate them back on just a hair. And this, this band walks so much less than the uh, rubberized bands, because uh, I like it a lot. Right, let me try this panel on the uh, butt for you. And then what we're going to do is say, uh, oh, okay, we're getting, we're getting close. We're getting close to the shape that way, but we don't have enough shape this way. And then when I feel your panel, I'm feeling that we have some inconsistencies, little highs and lows going through. So the, the easiest format to take care of that would be jump in the English wheel, do some cross wheeling. So then that way you'll be able to, at the same time as the, the wheel evens out a lot of the unevenness, and it's very slight, you'll be able to put more shape in it and still maintain the curvature that you've got. Okay. And at the same so time, you can push it. you'll be able to gently pull the panel over each time you go, and it will help the panel to be able to sit. So now you have enough, almost enough where it's sitting down, as you can feel. We've got a little bit less gap in here now, so the panel's starting to come over. But what we have is a rock. So that tells me there's not enough shape in this panel here. So we need to put more shape in it. You have two ways to do it. Either we jump into the wheel with stretch it linear this way, like we've been doing, or you come in with a cross wheel and put in more shape through cross wheeling. They're the two options. So I'm going to put more tension? You, you can do, but we're going to be taking the rubberized wheel off because you've got to put more shape into it. So instead of linear forming, no. you need to linear stretch. Okay. Because right now, we're getting to a point where you formed it as much as the panel will take before it starts becoming hollow. You see how it's hollow now? Dressing up. So now, so now we get to change the shape from being relatively flat to contoured this way over. <coughs> it's now starting to come like this. Okay. So now we need to put more shape in through here, but we don't want to lose um, our crown that we just put in. Because otherwise, if you start flattening that out, you'll go like, oh, where am I now? Because now you have to go back into the rubberized wheel and do all that too. So now what we're going to do is we're going to jump in with a, with a, without, a, without a rubber band and you're going to, you can see where your shape now, you, that's the six and there's the four. It's almost a four down here on the bottom. We're a little bit off on the top. Okay. So you can see where we still need to put some shape in through here. We need more shape in this area than we do this area. So if we jump in to the wheel and do some wheeling in through here, get our shape set, and then you'll be able to smooth up and blend uh, with, the, uh, with the with the height, with the uh, flat top wheel in the full size cross wheel. And that's really gonna make it turn over. Mm -hmm. So notice my action. I'm keeping it flat and level. I have my hand halfway on the panel to stop it from flapping. I'm steering with this hand while I'm supporting with this hand. Right. So I'm just coming through. It's all controlled from the one hand. You see how that is just manipulating them through. Just working it like a machine from one side to the other. So this action comes in natural, this one just supports. You'll find that you'll get into rhythm with it quite nicely. We can up our pressure just a hair more. So that's why I like to work on the outside of the wheel because it's more consistent. Working on the inside of the wheel, my shoulder's so close to the thing, sometimes I can't reach in that far. So I naturally just use the outside of the wheel. That's my preference, that's all.
So I've got the pressure just enough for you to be putting shape in, but not to work uh, quickly. And once you get the technique down and keep all your blow marks nice and close together, we'll up the pressure, all right? Mm -hmm. So you notice how it's difficult for you to be able to wheel in the flowing consistent close to the edge because your hand's in that position. Right. So if you were to move this hand further over to here, move this hand back into here, now try it. Now your fingers aren't in the way and you can get a consistent run. You may have more body movement, but that's just part of wheeling. Because my body moving back and forth now takes the place of your step back and forth, back and forth, right, yeah. And it looks like you're doing really nicely with the blow marks. So what I'm going to do, because like I said, I only put the pressure so that you're weaving shape in it, but not very much. I'm going to do a tiny more pressure for you. You're good to go. So now we're just ready to, to start wheeling that shape in until you get it to conform to what we need. And you're getting closer and closer to the four. You see how close that is now? Whereas you're rocking around on the six. Just that little bit of wheeling makes a big difference, doesn't it? But I don't want any more shape back here. No, I want it right but if you here. get too much space back there, it's because easy. Because this right here is a four. Yeah, that, that's a four, but you're not going to get that much more in because of the, of the shape of the lower anvil. Okay. So what might happen is it might start dipping down and just this section from here to here is easy to change rather than trying to change the whole thing. Okay. You can stop, start coming up to here, but you want to keep them staggered. You don't want them all ending at the same place. So if you're to go in, out, in, out, in, out, long, short, long, short, long, short, okay. you can do that as long as you don't get stop starts and you don't get lumps and bumps. It's more difficult getting the lumps and bumps out than stretching on edges to take a little bit of shape out the tail end. Okay. Your preference, your choice. See if we can run all the way up to as far as you can on the very ends. When you there, we go. That's the whole goal is to go the full length of the panel, especially on the ends, and then not running too close to the edges. Very nice, Jeff, for coming in. So little bit by little bit, we're gaining shape, we're getting consistency, consistency, excuse me. And practice will make perfect. So, it just takes time. So as you put the shape in there, Jeff, so you're getting more and more shape coming in through this area. Now we're gonna have to determine do you need any more shape on the lower section? So we're shaping up this area. As we're shaping up this area, once again, the panel is becoming more stretched, which is putting more pressure onto this, which will make this panel go like this. Okay. So now, we try that, we're getting a little bit hollow. 
So now we have to determine where's that hollowness change from being hollow to full. So it's full right here, coming in, and there's a transition point right about there that we need to pick up from here out to here, right? So now you've been running just inside this line, now you need to come down just below this line. Okay. And that's going to put a little bit more shape in here and pick that up and, and it's going to bring it back up smooth again. Okay. But if you start doing too much down in here, you're going to notice it's going to go like that. And you'll try and get the shape back in here and you're going to be, it's going to be ending up too cramped. Mm -hmm. So it's better to do it progressively so that you're in control of the panel, not the panel controlling you. Are we having fun? Oh, I'm loving every <laughs> second of it. Good. I'm just trying to make it perfect. So the wheel that you ordered is the full size Met the Brother wheel. Ah, yes. Yeah. And uh, what die set did you uh, order it with? Um, I need to order the other die set. It comes with, I guess, the flat. Okay, it comes with the flat, and then you're gonna order the Valley Crown? Yes, cool. Yeah, I think the rubber band is, is nice to have too. It's, um, I think it runs about 30 bucks, which is a nice price. Oh no, it's on the shopping list. Christmas stocking, maybe. <laughs> Super five <-time. laughs> So how are we looking now? Is it starting to come back in again? Yeah, it's starting to pick up. It's starting to. And we're not too worried about the very, very edge because like I said, the panel is three quarters of an inch bigger than we really want it. And we're going to be flipping that edge in and doing a wide edge on it anyway. Mm -hmm. So we're not too concerned with it right now. So we're it's looking pretty good. good. And the section that we need to be concerned with, we're looking pretty good. It's, it's about another five radius. But really what we're looking for is what is this radius so that we can work out how big of a flat top can we get away with. Okay. The bigger the flat top, the more smooth the panel is going to be because it's, it, it just uniformly smooths it out quicker. The narrower the blow, the more tendency it has to rib. I.e. if you go to the high crown wheel, it will rib the panel wheel easy. So looking at the, uh, the gauge here, I'm coming in with a 24, and 24, it's not quite 24, it's more like 36. So I place the gauge on there, that gives me a perfect understanding that I'm looking at the little flat, and I go, oh yeah, it's perfectly, it's gonna fit, it's gonna work with the 24 coming in there, on the little flat area, okay? So I know that I have enough, enough blend shape to be able to run down from one side to the other and back in cross wheeling, and it's not going to rip the panel because I've got too big of a flat wheel in there. And at the same time, I'm going to be able to keep my blowers nice and overlapped and be able to create more shape at the same time as smoothing, at the same time as slightly giving it some English and pulling it down. Okay. So I'll do the first little section for you. What we'll do is adjust our pressure to more of a shaping and smoothing. And what I have a tendency to do is at the beginning of the panel, hold my hand on the inside. Notice where this hand is though. This one is, is controlling the panel on the pitch up and over, up and over. And I'm getting a rhythm with my hand going backwards and forwards, coming around on the angle. This is the one that's going to be steering. This is the one that's going to be supporting. So when I come in, I might be a little bit closer, but at the same time, I start coming in.
and then I'll change to the outside. Notice how I have my hand at the easiest point. If it's all the way back here right now, I got a lot of movement and I've got a lot of difficulty trying to control the panel. Coming in close, I can now fully control that panel. If I'm too close, it, I don't have enough time to be able to keep moving my hand and, and distance wise. But at the same time, with this hand here, I'm pulling the panel down using a little English. Okay? So there's a lot going on all in one. And when you feel, you can feel how nice and smooth that is. And you can see, see how much that's rolled over mm -hmm. compared to here. So we haven't rolled it over enough. That's what you're going to be achieving. Okay. So like I say, you can work inside the wheel or outside the wheel, your preference, however you want to do it. Notice where your hand is. So for you to be able to pull this edge down, you're going to want this hand on the inside edge, the back panel. Got it. You'll be pulling slightly down with this hand. As the panel comes out, it'll be English, 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 English. You feeling that now? Backing up a vehicle, it's a mirror image to where your direction of metal. Straight, slight diagonal, straight, slight diagonal, straight, slight diagonal, straight, slight diagonal. Take your time, don't go and go as quick as I did, I was just showing you as an example. Get your rhythm down, straight, diagonal, straight, diagonal, straight, diagonal. Like I say, a lot going on. So what you're doing is you're using the top anvil flat to give that more contour at the same time as smoothing and stretching at the same time. And you're in control of the panel and it's doing what you want it to do rather than what it wants to do. Just relax, take a breath, go with the rhythm. amazing how much pressure is on there. It doesn't look like that much pressure because it glides so smoothly, doesn't it? Very much until you have to put it back in. <laughs> so just watch your fingers, be careful. You know, because you're doing the class, you get the opportunity to use a full-sized English wheel class to get It'd be used to the bench top metal rail wheel and you can feel the difference and you can also understand a lot of differences in the wheel shapes, the size of the wheels and everything else. Jumping from one to the other, it's quite different, isn't it? Very much so. I guess it's kind of like driving a big truck, driving a little sports car. track marks yeah good good yeah it's a lot going on you've got double curvature on the panel your blow marks you're trying to keep the track in perfect and at the same time you put a little english on it too plus trying to make the panel go the right direction <laughs> 